Hey guys, so as you guys already know, uh, the Nexus 7 second generation, as you can see in front of you, uh, it's a, a pretty fast tablet right out of the box. It's pretty snappy at opening apps and loading pages and all that good stuff. So that's primarily because uh, the CPU and the SOC it uses it's, uh, is a pretty uh, fast one. Uh, it runs on the Snapdragon S4 platform uh, SOC with the Adreno 320 uh, GPU, but it's uh, slightly different than the traditional uh, S4 uh, Pro that you found on last year's phones and tablets. Basically it uses an updated version of the cores, CPU cores as well as it uses LPDDR3 RAM now instead of LPDDR2 RAM um, and overall it seems to be a much better uh, or updated uh, S4 Pro than what you found on last year's chipset such as the Nexus 4 here. So this used uh, what I would call the first generation although officially there is no update um, I personally think that this is an updated version of the S4 Pro on the found on the Nexus 4 and to be honest it's pretty fast however in this video I'll be basically showing you how to go ahead and make this SOC even faster by overclocking uh, the CPU and GPU so uh, for this what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use a custom kernel so I'll be showing you the entire procedure how to do it so firstly what you want to do is go ahead and open up XDA developers now I'll just go ahead and open up a new page so I'll launch XDA developers and just go into XDA developers forums and I will fast forward it so that I quickly go ahead and do that And once you're in the forums, what you want to do is go ahead and search for your device, which is basically Nexus 7 second generation. Nexus 7 2013, as you can see right there. I'll just focus this in for you. Nexus 7 2013. So this is what you want to look for. And it will open up the page. Uh, dedicated to the next seven second generation and here what you want to do is go ahead and open up the original Android development page so I'll go ahead and do that and on the original development page you find several kernels but the kernel which we will use for this overclock is basically um, Fox kernel as you know Fox is a well-known developer out there who's produced some great kernels um, for past Nexus devices such as, such as the Nexus 4 so we'll be using the Fox uh, kernel for the FLO Jelly Bean 4.3 so this is the the thread that we're looking for I'll leave a link down in the description for this thread so you can directly go ahead and use that and basically he he provides you with three kernels which you can use uh, firstly is his enhanced stock kernel and I'll show you what how each of these kernels differ uh, a bit later in this video but he provides you with the enhanced stock kernel the mainline kernel and the ultra combo kernel which you can use they're all the same kernel but they allow you to uh, use different frequencies max frequencies so to know the main differences what I'll do is I'll open up this change log here which is uh, given us so I'll open up this link and it will open up a new page and right on top if you see he, he gives you the main differences between the three so he says enhanced stock or the ES kernel uh, you're limited to the stock CPU and GPU clock speeds while as on the mainline kernel if you want overclock it allows you to go all the way to 2.1 gigahertz so that is a huge overclock uh, nonetheless and it allows you to also overclock the GPU to 450 megahertz from the stock 400 megahertz however if you want to overclock even further you can go ahead and overclock to 2.3 gigahertz using the ultra ultra kernel and it also allows you to overclock the GPU to 487.5 megahertz so depending on how much you want to overclock uh, it allows you to go ahead and do that so that is great so uh, for this video since we'll be using uh, uh, since I'll be only overclocking for a short period of time I'll be using the ultra uh, kernel since allow it allows us to go with the maximum amount of overclock however uh, I should uh, tell you guys that I would not recommend you guys to overclock more than around 1.7 to maybe 1.8 gigahertz at the max for everyday use because simply because uh, you will not see as much of a performance difference and instead what you'll be doing is wearing out the CPU and your CPU will be getting heated up much more and basically all thermal throttling will be coming in and all that stuff so instead of 
basically what I want to say is the gains overclocking at more than 1.7, 1.8 gigahertz is not as great. Uh, I saw significant improvements in benchmarks uh, while overclocking to 1.7 to 1.8. However, increasing it further, I did not see as big of a performance difference. So yeah, just wanted to tell you guys that. Now uh, let's go ahead and download the kernel and you can go ahead and directly do it from your device. So just click on the kernel that you want and it should start a download automatically and it should say starting download and if you see in your um, notifications panel it says download complete so that means you have finished uh, downloading and uh, to flash this now you you are going to need a custom recovery so if you don't have a custom recovery go ahead and install one uh, find a tutorial on YouTube or on XDA and go ahead and uh, use a custom recovery to flash it so I'll now go ahead and boot up into my recovery which is TWRP recovery you can obviously use CWM as well it works just as well so yeah be going ahead rebooting into recovery and then flashing this kernel and it is rebooting now and should boot up into my TWRP recovery so here it is it's loading up TWRP now and what we're going to do is go ahead and into the install menu and you're going to nav navigate to where you have downloaded which is usually in your download folder so go ahead and find uh, the root of your SD card and then after you find the root go ahead and go navigate to your downloads folder and here you can see I have my flo-jb-kernel and this is the kernel that we're going to flash so select it and now it's asking me to swipe to confirm the flash so I will go ahead and do that and now it's flashing there you go you see successful there and now it asks you to wipe your cache and dial the cache uh, which you can do or you can skip uh, if it gets stuck you can go ahead and reboot back into recovery and wipe this but I'll simply go ahead and reboot the system and hopefully it should work fine and there you can see it is booting back up and right now you'll probably see the carbon rom boot animation because i am running carbon rom however this will work with any rom even the stock rom any other custom rom as well so the rom is not a limiting factor here so yeah hopefully we'll be booted up soon and i can show you how to go ahead and overclock there you go now once you first flash this you will have the stock frequency set to the max frequencies however to overclock them what you want to do is go ahead and install an overclocking application personally i prefer a trickster mod which works the best so i'll go ahead and load that up trickster mod there is a free version as well as a paid version i definitely recommend you guys to go ahead and use the paid uh, free version if you don't want to pay for it uh, and this tends to be a really good app if you want to tweak your kernel and change some kernel settings and do all sorts of tweaking to your device so you have to grant it root permissions obviously and i'll go ahead and permanently allow root permissions for this and now what you want to do is go ahead and scroll twice to the right and go into the cpu frequency control here as you can see here it allows you to uh, change your minimum, maximum and all, uh, frequencies, your governors as well as other stuff. So what you want to do is go ahead and change the maximum frequency and not the minimum. So maximum frequency now it allows you to change all the way from 15, uh, 1.5 gigahertz to all the way to 2.3 gigahertz as you can see. It says 2322000 which basically is 2.3. You should basically get to know uh, what the frequency is from the first two numbers. So if you can see it's 2322 which is around uh, 2.3 gigahertz this is 2.2 and a half gigahertz so 22.25 gigahertz this is 2.21 gigahertz this is 2.1 gigahertz and so on so I personally find that for my device uh, it can maximum handle uh, a frequency of around 2 gigahertz before it starts rebooting and gets glitchy so I'll go ahead and overclock it to around 2 gigahertz so after that's done you can also go ahead and uh, overclock the GPU or I think this uh, comes okay the GPU seems to come pre overclocked to 487 megahertz from 400 megahertz so you don't need to do that however you can go ahead and underclock it to 320 megahertz if you want but it is already overclocked so you can't really do much about that so yeah now what you want to do is go ahead and apply these settings by clicking the tick button here and it should say applied successfully here and then you're good to go your uh, CP, uh, CPU is overclocked and now just to show you the benchmarks of this uh, overclocked Nexus 7 and show you how fast it loads stuff up what I'll do is I'll go ahead and open up a few pages here now my network connection is a bit slow so that's why uh, that might be the limiting factor there so but nevertheless it is pretty fast let me just go ahead and open GSM Arena and show you how fast it renders the page 
Okay, I seem to have too many tabs open. So I'll go ahead and load up JSON Marina. And like I said, uh, it is still rendering it pretty fast. My network connection is a bit slow, but it is pretty much faster. As you can see, pinch to zoom works really, really fast. Everything's working really fast. As you can see, opening apps, closing apps, everything's working really fast. There you can see. And yeah, I'll quickly run Quadrant Standard as well to show you uh, the performance and benchmarks. So yeah, here goes, and hopefully this will give you an idea of how the overclocked uh, Nexus 7 second generation performs. So it's done here, and let's go ahead and process these, and hopefully we should get a good score. And as you can see, it has scored a massive score of 7,613. Uh, if I remember right, the default Nexus 7 scored uh, just over uh, 5,500 or 6,000, if I'm right. I don't exactly remember it at the top of my head, but uh, here it's scoring around 7,000 points, which is definitely a bump up from the stock uh, score that you get. So the benchmarks make it clear that it is making a difference. and. Uh, Basically, yeah, this was a quick tutorial on showing you how to go ahead and overclock your Nexus 7 uh, second generation. I hope you guys liked it and uh, I recommend no more than a 1.8 or maybe 1.7 gigahertz overclock. Just keep uh, your CPU safe and not to wear it out. Uh, and yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Thanks guys for watching and once again, uh, it's Ennicold. Peace out.